After Operation Sea Lion, the German plan to invade the United Kingdom was written out by the German High Command. They realized they barely had any intelligence officers in Britain and they weren't sure what was going on across the English Channel. They thought up Operation Lena and its purpose was to establish a network of operator agents in Britain. It would be one of the most disastrous intelligence missions the Nazi regime would undertake during the Second World War. When the invasion plan of Britain, codenamed Unternehmen Seelöwe, or Operation Sea Lion, was established, most senior German military commanders weren't exactly thrilled, especially the Navy. Many ships were lost during Operation Wesrübung, the invasion of Denmark and Norway, and the Royal British Fleet outmatched the Kriegsmarine in virtually everything. Furthermore, the Wehrmacht voiced complaints that in order for troops to cross the English Channel, both air and sea protection was required to hold back imminent British attacks. Hermann Göring's Luftwaffe ought to obtain absolute control over the skies before sea lion could be launched, according to the Kriegsmarine and Wehrmacht. Göring accepted the task, though the Luftwaffe wasn't suited to wage a battle on its own, and Hitler voiced his complaints that, while the occupied territories were divided from Britain by a 23-mile channel, they did not even know what was going on there. The lack of accurate intelligence could be fatal, and a plan was devised by the Abwehr to send secret agents to Britain. In July 1940, Wilhelm Canares, head of the Abwehr, Heinz Pickenburg, a Wehrmacht general, and Erwin von Lahausen, a high-ranking Abwehr official, attended the conference that outlined Sea Lion. Field Marshal Wilhelm Keitel and Hitler himself pressed the men to find spies to gather intelligence in Britain which Canaris thought was a suicide mission, as he could not suddenly conjure up agents. Resisting the orders wasn't an option though, and as such, men were recruited to become Abwehr spies in what would become known as Operation Lena. Captain Herbert Wichmann was the head of the department that organized Operation Lena. In order to keep the operation as secret as possible, an extra department under Dr. Pretorius was set up in Hamburg and the logistics of parachuting agents into Britain required a special squadron under Luftwaffe captain Karl Gartenfeld to be created. The whole operation was under the command of Nikolaus Ritter, who had theoretical experience of intelligence work, but the practical side would prove to be much different than the books. To begin with, Ritter proposed that a brothel in London ought to be financed by the Abwehr. The greenhouse run by Mrs. Ericsson and an Italian lady that called herself Countess Montebelli de Condo. Ritter reasoned that pillow talk could provide useful intelligence. After all, the infamous Salon Kitty in Berlin proved to supply Reinhard Heydrich's Sicherheitsdienst with intelligence. The two women accepted Ritter's offer, much to his joy. There was just a tiny problem that Ritter wasn't aware of. The greenhouse was run by MI5, and the two ladies were double agents. The greenhouse would serve as a cover for multiple agents sent to Britain by the Abwehr, and as you can probably guess, they got off to a rather poor start, as MI5 was fully aware of their identity, movements, and purpose before they even set foot on shore. These recruits were gathered from wherever they presented themselves, and quality wasn't necessarily a priority. An example is Vera von Schalburg, a Russian whose brother, Christian Frederick von Schalburg, died not just fighting alongside the Schutzstaffel on the Eastern Front, but he actually was the second in command of the Free Corps of Denmark. Vera first appeared on the radar working for the NKVD, the Russian Secret Service, while in Paris. At the same time, she had close contacts with the SIS station head, Commander Wilfred Biffy Dunderdill. She switched to become an Abwehr agent, however, once she became the lover of the head of the Abwehr Marine Intelligence Service, Hilmar Dierks. Now, Vera was tasked to enter Great Britain together with two other Abwehr agents, Werner Walti and Karl Drücke. The trio attempted to land on the Scottish coast in September 1940, but because of the weather they had to return to their base in Norway. Four days later they attempted to cross the sea another time 
and managed to land near Inverness. Werner went to Glasgow on his own and Vera and Carl left via the Port Gordon train station, taking the train towards London. Vera and Carl both arrived at the train station with wet clothes and suitcases, which did arouse some suspicion among the people at the station. All we know is that a person phoned the police and policeman John Grieve arrived shortly after. When asked for their identity papers, he noticed they had no immigration stamps in their passports and Carl didn't even speak a word of English. The deal was arrested and sent to the police station where the police inspector, John Simpson, carried out the interrogation and investigation. The deal was carrying a torch made in Bohemia and 327 pounds sterling, which equals to about a year's worth of wages. Both were formally arrested as German spies and Vera decided to testify against Karl, who was executed shortly thereafter. Balti managed to reach Edinburgh on his own, but aroused suspicion on the way, and someone contacted the special branch, after which Chief Constable William Merrillis arrived. What happened as Walty was approached is unclear, except that Walty and Merrillis got in a struggle in which Walty attempted to draw his Luger pistol but was overpowered by Merrilis and subsequently arrested. Valti, just like Carl, was hanged. In contrast, Vera, after testifying, became an agent for MI5. She survived the war, living until 1993. Another opera agent was Carl Richter. He was parachuted into England in 1941 and was immediately captured. He claimed he was innocent and would do so until his final moments before he was hanged. Such was the absolute disaster of Operation Lena. The Norwegian agents Tor Glad and John Mo were recruited by the opera station in Oslo. Glad appeared to be a loyal Nazi and Mo was fluent in English. They seemed like the perfect fit. After one failed attempt, the second time they did manage to land on the coast in Scotland in 1941. And it didn't take long for both of them cycling through the landscape to be apprehended by a police car. However, the men didn't really make a secret of who they were and what their objective was. They told the police officers they were opera agents and handed over their guns. They were subsequently taken to London by the Aberdeen police and ended up at MI5 headquarters for interrogation. Colonel Robin Tinai Stevens interrogated the men who argued they should not be executed and perhaps could even be of use to MI5. They obviously weren't diehard spies as they voluntarily surrendered. John Moe even brought up the Norwegian Minister of Foreign Affairs, Plikvili, who was in exile in Britain as he could supposedly vouch for his good character. Stevens decided the men could be of use and they were, under MI5 supervision, prepared as double agents. In a London flat, the codenames Jeff and Mutt were born. They had to transmit fake messages to the upper station in Hamburg. After Glad went on a drinking spree with his MI5 minder, Phil Ree, and broke his curfew, he was shipped off to an internment camp anyway. The night out wasn't necessarily the problem. It was the fact that Glad started getting rather nosy about SIS operations the more drunk he got. Mo, however, continued to send bogus messages to the opera for multiple years under the codename Agent Ya. First, Mo sent reports about sabotage raids he participated in, which were believed by the opera, after which the opera requested information about British plans regarding assaults on Europe. Mo made up a story about a fleet being prepared to invade Norway, and this report contributed to the German failure to detect Operation Torch, the landings of the Allies in North Africa in 1942. The fake transmissions to Germany went on for months and in February 1943 the British launched their so-called Operation Oatmeal, an attempt to get the opera to resupply Mo with money, a new transmitter and other supplies. Once the German aircraft dropped the items requested, the British discovered it was filled with supplies they themselves had dropped to the French and Dutch resistance. The Germans, with twisted humor, made it known that I knew Mo had been compromised. Mo would eventually join the British Army and interrogate German prisoners of war and former Nazi agents. These are just a few stories of upper agents in Britain under Operation Lena, the double cross system MI5 maintained in order to turn upper agents such as Mutt and Jeff and have them work for Britain was used extensively during the war. But that's a story for another time. Thank you for watching this video and what is an event or person from the Second World War 
that you would like to know more about and perhaps see a video of. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing to my channel. See you next time.